but it's Spain definitely through. And Italy in second place with three points still to play Croatia. Let's have a look at the last round of fixtures. Then Croatia, Italy on Monday in Leipzig. And at the same time, Albania against Spain. We had a bit of a debate beforehand about whether Spain are serious contenders. What, what do you think after that? Um, I, I, I think the chances they, they had today, you, you, you have to still consider them the way they played. Um, I'd still feel maybe centre halves, maybe a bit more pressure on them. Like I say, Skamaka, he didn't hold the ball up well, didn't see them under too much pressure. But in respect of a team going forward, controlling and with the pace, then, you know, yeah, I still fancy yeah, them. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, a chance. Yeah, yeah, of course. But obviously, bigger challenges ahead. They've got that quality, the composure, just that little bit of end product. If that can improve, they're a threat. A few more goals off the bench, maybe a few, you know, is that one area where you'd look at and go, if they had a little bit more coming off the bench when they need it to score? Or even the starting players who, to be fair, got the chances in the yeah. first half, being a bit more ruthless, just taking a chance. They should be two or three up at half time. Um, so they weren't ruthless in the last tournament. Is that going to carry on into this tournament and is it going to cost them in the end? You know, Ian's mentioned the actual sort of defensive side of the game, but I think really they, they, they should be scoring more goals with the way in which they're playing. Some football, some of the football's outstanding. Saying that, they've scored four goals in two games, you know. Yes, absolutely. Bad. We talked about Lamine Yamal beforehand. If one doesn't get you, the other will. It was Nico Williams' night as well. That shows the threat, doesn't it? You can think yeah. about one side of the pitch and actually it's the other and player who does the damage. Oh, pure quality and he's obviously that pace. You can't coach that. And we saw it in the first half. He's a threat. When he gets 1v1 and gets a full back, you know, he's in all sorts of trouble and he can go left or right. We saw with his shooting power, his crossing. Excellent player, best player on the park. Strength, oh, this great attitude, he's just, you know, strong. You felt for your fellow right oh, back tonight, when you know you? you're done. When you get done in the air, then he puts you on your backside, then he goes round you and think, oh, it's a long Brings day. Brings back memories, does it, Gary? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a and long that, that run there he makes is an amazing Brilliant. run. Obviously, he should do better with the end chance, but that really hard, fast run inside your fullback. That will never fail that to hurt a fullback. Even if it doesn't come off, you just know you're in for a long game. And then he goes outside you, he goes inside you, yeah. he goes left foot there and obviously sets the goal up. He's a little bit unlucky in the end, the defender. But it's brilliant. And honestly, that it will be a nightmare to play against him. And if you keep going to the well like that, you get those deflections. Yeah, don't but you? the thing with him is, is, is that he's, once he gets on the ball, whether he's, got, whether he's got space behind him or not, he's looking to take you on, he's looking to do something positive. And it's not have to be a great cross, back. Yeah. Right, does huh? it? It doesn't have to be a great no, cross. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be. You know, this is this is brilliant. Because, you know, I mean, like again, the defender doesn't know what to do with him. He could take him on. He could cut inside. He could lay it one two. He can shoot. It's a nightmare. <laughs> He's gonna have a nightmare tonight. This guy's sleeping. <laughs> He's 21, you're miles 16. If you're sort of 25, 26, 27, you suddenly feel like a young man, don't you, playing with those sorts of players? The energy it, that infuses you know what it into does you. Bring, we, we've experienced it ourselves as players when a young, good players come into a group. It just it, it lifts everybody. Again, they're so young and innocent, and they're obviously, they won't be playing with any fear. What about Italy? They looked a bit... A bit, a bit <laughs> prosaic, to be blunt, didn't they? Look, Spain can make you look like that just over the last 10, 15 years, the way in which they keep the ball, they're a smooth team, and they can make you look a little bit sort of rigid. They make you look a bit old and sort of, yeah, like in clunky. And that's what Italy looked, but they hung in there. The goalkeeper made some saves, but they were yeah. short tonight on the night. And look <laughs> up front, I mean, right, he mentioned yeah. it. You know, if you're going to defend deep like that, you need a counter-attack of some note, and they didn't have that, so it's yeah. a bit... It was a tough night for Italy. It was a big I, chance for Skamaka, wasn't it? And he did not take no, it. No, because like, I think that it's, you need you need a centre forward who's going to be the focal point. He's going to hold it so as everybody else can get involved in the game. I thought that they broke through Spain a couple of times really well, but then it, it broke down at the, at the top end. You're not going to be able to. And you need that breeder, absolutely, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If your striker's not getting a hold of it, and you're yeah. constantly under pressure and defending. You need someone just to get you up the pitch just so you can get, have a breather. It's sometimes as simple as that. Whatever more is link up play, get hold of it, make it stick. It's actually given Croatia just a little bit of an opening, that, has it? Because we thought, we all know how brilliant their midfield is, but it's quite an old midfield. But actually, Italy having lost that game, it's just given Croatia a little bit of an inkling, has it, of something in the last group game? Yeah, you wouldn't put it past Croatia, you know, knowing how they've been in, in tournament football. I still think Italy probably may just go through and have enough. But, like you say, Croatia are in with a chance and they've got a lot of experience. Goal four on target, really. Some good chances by any metric the Spanish should be in front. Yeah, they've been really good. I mean, it's been tough going for Italy. We said before the game that they would hang in there, mainly through their goalkeeper and some missing chances of, of the Spanish forwards. But they've got a real good balance to them. Spain, so smooth through the middle of the park. They've got electricity in those wide areas and they should be a little bit more ruthless. A couple of years ago in Qatar, it cost them in that game against Morocco where they couldn't score and they just need to get that bit right. 
Thank, and they're getting some good opportunities from the wide areas. It's actually not always the wingers who are delivering those opportunities, but there's a couple of very good chances, particularly Pedri early on. Yeah, great chances. Now, you, this question mark, obviously, obviously, it's always about the end product and the strength <laughs> of the, obviously, a head and ability, but they're very comfortable, good possession. They get it wide. As soon as Williams stands the full back up, he's gone past him. And this is, you see Pedri wandering in like oh, a little shimmy there, but then there's no conviction in the header. Yeah. There's no conviction. It's, it's almost like he's surprised they came to him. This keeper's done well, but. Great chance, and again, look at these players. This is the well, this is interesting because it's Ray Williams making yes. the run. It's Morata who's yeah, out there. Yeah, Ali makes the point in commentary. Sometimes they know strikers know what kind of delivery to put in, and this is this is better than the first chance we've seen. Now Williams again. We go back. You're that near to the goal. There's pace in it. Hit the target. You have these are huge chances. And then, this it, is amazing. And Morata here. Tell us exactly. Give well, us I a shout when I he just shoots. Think that he's, once he gets this there, he's got to be shooting there. He's got to be swinging his foot on that keeper. You can see the keeper's trying to set himself, and now he's taking himself too wide, but. I think that I've, I've been a little bit disappointed with Morata because I think there's instances where I've, I would like to have seen him in the centre. You know, in the centre, you know, the Charles of Pedri, I'd love to have seen him on that, but, you know, there should be a couple of goals up. Fabian Ruiz got a terrific yeah. goal against Croatia. What, what's impressed you most about him this well, evening? Well, everything, you know, whether he's at the back, whether he's in the middle, whether he's up top, taking shots, he's, um, he, he's, he's a fantastic player. P technically brilliant, you know, vision, you know, every, everything what you need from, the, from a midfielder. You know, and this this is this is this is the, the fantastic players. Just the way that he'll just and it just can't bam. No, there's no rushing, no fussing like this. This this here, this is like no panic. He's hardly got anything on. Okay, let me just keep it, keep it, and then plays it in there. Not only that, but he's gonna go and play again, and then he, he'll get back on again. It's like constantly being in a situation where he can get the ball, recycle, and go again. You know, it's just. This is a brilliant Gary, what does that calmness do for his teammates? Oh, I mean, it, obviously, you've got Rodri in there as well, but he balances off him brilliantly. He reminds me a little bit of Emmanuel Petit and how he balanced off Vieira back in the day. And this is a great strike. Mm. And the goalkeeper has to work hard, but it would be a fantastic performance from him in the first half, a, a lesson in how to play midfield. Really good habit in it, to be in the right place at the right time, and that composure brings calmness to the whole team. He's a quality player. The slimmest of pickings for Italy. It really is counter-attacking football, just one... One shot at goal. Yeah, but it's, yeah, they're up against it, which we knew that, but they still need to do better when they're going forward. I still thought they'd have a bit more quality. Striker not getting hold of him. I know Riley's getting frustrated with him. They have to do a bit more in possession. Yeah, they're, up, they're under pressure, and obviously you think that will tell as the second half goes on, but they need a bit more when it goes up to the striker. You know something? It's, it's, people won't realise how important that is because Italy are staying in it. We know that they can. Spain have missed the kind of chances they should have taken. But, like, if the striker can get hold of it so he can get people to support him, they can move themselves up the pitch and then they can start putting, for me, Laporte especially, under pressure. He seems to me like he's constantly trying to win that. In f I think that he's somebody they can get the ball in that final third. He's somebody that can play off to him, can maybe run off of him. They might be able to get something. 